Welcome to a brand new video. Now, if you are new to my channel, and if you're not new to my channel, we've got a, a bit of a different video today. For the longest time, I've been getting so many requests by people telling me, hey, you should jump on a student interview with all the people that you're posting on your Instagram sto uh, stories getting results uh, with your mentorship. Now, if you guys are not aware, yes, I'm fully transparent. I do offer mentorship and the results have been quite spectacular. So a few weeks ago, I decided, hey, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do this student interview. So I'm going to start jumping on calls with my students and not so much make it about my mentorship and the content covered, but have a genuine chat about their journey and what has worked for them what they struggle with, their strengths, their weaknesses, so you can learn about their journey and ultimately take away value from this interview. So I'm very excited to start rolling out a few of these in the upcoming weeks. Today though, we've got Kasim. Now Kasim has a pretty spectacular story. When he jumped on my mentorship, he was 17. He was working from his parents' room in Glasgow, still attending high school, uh, still is attending high school actually, but had no clue as to what social media marketing agency actually was. Just knew that he wanted to do it. He had the work ethic, but the, the only thing that he lacked was the right map, the right guidance. I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but in less than a year, he went from zero dollars with his agency to now making $30,000 per month at the age of 18. Pretty cool stuff, and I'm excited to jump on this call with him, ask him some juicy questions, and really get into his journey. So without further ado, let's cut right into that. No, but um, yeah, we're just talking about how your life has changed quite yeah. drastically. You know, That's now I see you uh, driving uh, Lambos, you know, uh, yeah. partying up in Dubai. Um, yeah. when I first met you, I, I remember when we first had that call, um, you know, the application call for the mentorship, yeah. uh, you were a kid. It will seem like exactly. you were a kid, right? I was to go to university. Uh, I was going to study computing science. So I'd you know, obviously get a comfortable job, but it'd never be the life that I'd want to live. And it'd never be, you know, I'd never be able to have the chance to really, uh, be free and make my family free of doing uh, work or worrying about anything. And take care okay. of my friends, yeah, and everything like that. So, yeah, I think staying the way I am right now, it'll be a, a good life, but it wouldn't be a life that it wouldn't be the life that I want to live. Uh, you, you're still you're still very fucking young. You're, you're yeah. 17. Uh, yeah, I still. turned 18 in December. Yeah, so I'm 18 now. Okay. Um, so you're 18, right? Uh, yeah. When we first spoke, you were uh, younger, but mentally younger as well, right? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and I I just want to get straight into it. You know, I, I want to go uh, kind of like a little timeline. Um, yeah. First of all, what, what do you think is like the biggest difference when it comes to the mindset? Because we'll get into the numbers and all that stuff, but uh, looking at the person you are right now uh, compared to the, the person that I first met, what, yeah. what, are you, what are you most proud of? Like what, what's the biggest change? Um, the biggest change, there's a lot of things. I, I'm like a completely different person, if I'm totally honest, but I say the biggest change is that when, when, you first, when, when I met you, uh, that first kind of application call that I had for the mentorship, I was in a pretty bad state. Uh, so I, I can go like up to take a, let's say like a minute to go through like the context of my backstory. So I was 17. Um, this is like last start of last year, um, and I was going to do computing as my career. Um, this uh, the whole throughout the whole of high school, uh, I, I was going to choose computing not for the reason of I like computing. I really don't to be honest. Um, I'm not passionate about it, but it was just I knew that's where the money was. But I never really understood what the day-to-day -day task or like the actual life would be. So it came to a point in high school where I applied for a job at Barclays, uh, at like a big bank, uh, as a, like a software developer. I got the job and then I, when I actually realized what they do day-to-day -day and I talked to a few people that work there, um, I, I quickly realized that it was like the, the opposite of what I wanted to do in life. I knew that it was nothing that what I thought it would be. Um, and it's kind of like a reality check. Uh, and then from that point, I was like really... I just became so mental in like a terrible mental state. Like everything, I would be pessimist. I'd be angry at everything. I'd always be stressed, like for no reason. Like I've been having to be stressed about. I was seventeen years old. Um, the anxiety, all this kind of stuff. So like my mindset was just at the worst it possibly could have been. Um, like huge pessimist. Like it's everything. Like I think the worst of everything. Always get angry at stupid stuff. Like that's the smallest things I get angry at. Um, so yeah, it's just really bad. Like a bad person in general. Um, and then. So that was kind of me when I when I first met you, uh, and then I'd say now literally the, my whole perspective on life and kind of the way I live my life is like changed. Like I've done like a one eighty almost. I pretty much like my whole life's completely changed, uh, and the way I look at it. Um, so now like I have I can now. So I had that vision. So I guess I could say this: my vision that I always had, you know, deep down was that I wanted to um, be the first person in my family that could kind of take my family out of financial struggle. They don't come from a wealthy family. They're, my whole my parents have done well to shield me from the financial struggles that they've had. 
but they have been really struggling and I didn't realize that back then but I do I did start to realize um, and that's when I got really worried about how I could get there and that I knew computing wasn't the way to get there for me um, I saw that's when I started to turn that into that person so then when I went through you, you know the mentorship and then started to, you know I went through the, the struggles through the business and actually started to do well I, I then kind of my mind I had like a roadmap on how to get out of that how to get to that goal of you know saving my family from financial struggle um and that there like a, the biggest stress that i've ever had was relieved and then my and then from there i started to meditate i started to read about um you know self-image mindset and then i then everything in terms of the way i think my perspective on life uh, how i'd approach my day in terms of i wasn't a pessimist anymore i never i literally haven't been angry in a long long time um yeah it's, it's everything the way the way i present myself the way i speak the way i do things the way i like come to relationships or i talk about relationships um literally everything has changed for the for the better um so it's a huge huge difference uh, in terms of the way i was and i'm yeah i'm really proud of that that change that's been a, if that i'm so happy that it happened this early uh, rather than happening like mid-20s or early 20s uh, i'm really happy that i had that i went through that kind of pros like mindset mindset shift this early in my life yeah because was that always the you know you mentioned uh, the you know that that you had this very noble uh, mission of uh, of taking your family out of poverty right was that well not poverty uh of financial struggle um not poverty but financial struggle uh, so was there any other drive because uh, I, I know for you you know i want to i want to touch on on the relationship side of things and and how important for you it is to to feel like you you're leveling up your network and all that stuff um what, was there any like other vision that, that you had uh, for your life yeah, of course. Yeah, obviously, I wanted to be rich. Like at the end of the day, like you know, you could see all this stuff. But at, at that time, when I was seventeen, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be a millionaire. Um, I wanted to have a really good life and be the guy who's rolling around in, in Lambos and with a big house and, and a really good family. So obviously, yeah, nobody can deny that that's a, like a huge part of why you start a business. You want to have a good life. Um, so of course, my family, getting them, I feel like getting them out of the situation that we were in, um, was. A big part of changing my life as well like I, obviously changing my life is a huge thing like for myself to be able to go to dubai and mess around with lambos but my family still be in poverty it's not that they they're both kind of linked for me like uh, i can't be happy without them being happy that kind of thing yeah, yeah. so obviously like that they were both in conjunction uh kind of my family going out of the situation that they're in so they don't have to worry about money and then also myself never having to worry about money either and kind of doing what i want uh, and kind of having a really good life uh that was obviously um a huge, huge part. And also, a really big part for me is the reason I chose, this is going off on a tangent kind of, but the reason I chose, you know, um, a marketing agency over drop shipping, Amazon FBA, or whatever other businesses, is because I wanted to be a respectable business owner. Like, I wanted to be somebody that people look up to in business. Um, and that is why I started this business model, because I knew it was like this for loads of loads of reasons. Um, but that's why also that's another big driver of why I started this business model, uh, an agency over anything else as well. Yeah. yeah. Why an e-com? Why an e-com agency? So e-com agency. So for, first off, the business model itself it's service based. So obviously a big thing for me, I had no money. Um, I, I had no money to even join uh, to even work with Jaime. So I had to ask my dad for that money too. Um, so I had no money at all. So I couldn't put any capital into anything. I couldn't buy stock. I couldn't invest into anything. So I needed no capital investment um, to start the business. That's a big thing. And then also the business itself, it's just obviously service-based. It requires you as a person to, to to drive the business forward. And I feel like, I don't know, it's 100% true that the, the skills that you build um, in this business model, where you're setting meetings, you're talking to people, it's pretty much you. It's, it's how you present yourself, how you talk to people. It's your how you can persuade people, how you can communicate, how you can manage a team, how you can build a team. How you can get people to trust you, um, and then ultimately get results and what your what your services. Um, that's the reason I chose this business model. But then with ecom, um, ecom is just too. It's just like it, and I knew it was the future. I knew it is, it is the future, um, and it still needs to start to become amazing. Um, and I knew that the difference between ecom and local businesses is that ecom is never going to die, and it's literally recession proof. It's like it's it's never going to die, um, at least in the next like God knows how long. Um, but I knew with local businesses, also in terms of the money side, obviously ecom, you know, is, is substantially, you know, better with the money. But not just that. It's in terms of when I see these ecom brands, this is an ecom brand is something that I would like to start in the future as well. So when I saw these ecom brands, um, ecom brands, 
it's not just that I want to work with them, but I also want to be an econ brand owner myself one day, um, right. hopefully, next, hopefully in the next few years. Um, so that's why I chose that over working with local businesses or you know whatever else. Um, that's why I chose econ because I knew that one, it's an extremely good niche because of the industry that it's in. You know, the, the, it's recession proof. It, you can't. It's not going to die. Um, also, money side, obviously, it's very good in terms of when you get to a good level, you can start charging performance incentives, um, which can be very lucrative. And then also in terms of I want to start a brand, so I wanted to kind of be in that industry and kind of have a foothold in that industry before I get into into it myself. Yeah, hundred percent. I, I I talk about that a lot. The the fact that like people underestimate the you know if if you're gonna do business with people, at least do business with people people that you would like resonate with them and be passionate uh, mm-hmm. about what they're doing, right? Uh, like if you're helping someone that like you resent the way they do business or yeah. the, their lifestyle, it's not gonna be as rewarding. Whereas if you're working with like econ founders who are living the life that you want, yeah. right? It can literally take you under your wing. Like they, they can be like, uh, on top of like my mentor, for example, they can be your mentors as well, right? Yeah. In the e-com space. Um, like you help them with a specific, and, and why would they trust you? Well, you help them with a specific thing that they don't have the time to do. They don't yeah. have the knowledge to do, the skill set to do, right? Um, so extremely rewarding for sure. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. In, in terms of, you know, touching on the agency a, a bit more and, and, and shifting gears, um, what, because you mentioned when you started the, the mentorship, right? Uh, there were like a few months, like uh, how, how long did it take you to sign that first client? Uh, so it was a, a, this is something I look back on. Um, I, can't, I can't say regret because this was something that definitely was a like sort of a catalyst or like a turning point into making me realize that I'm not doing things right. And it turned me into the person I am yeah. today. So, so to give you guys a timeline, um, kind of April time is when we did our mentorship. Um, lasted around a month, maybe five, six weeks. Um, so I, I knew everything I needed. Like you gave me everything I needed to, do, to, to, to know to get to a really good point. Um, but then myself, I came from a place where I was, I, I was never a person that put the extra effort in. I never put work in when I was, was told, when I wasn't told to. My dad told me, like a, a really good example is my dad always told me this. So I play tennis, I've been playing tennis my whole life at like a really high level. Um, my dad, my dad always told me, like even when I was younger, I want to be the best, but I don't have what it takes to. I don't, I don't put in what it takes to get there. And I always said, like, oh, you're talking rubbish. You know, yes, I do. Um, I, I can put in the effort, but then, you know, when when there's nobody telling you to do something, there's no, it's like it's all on you, and there's like there's nobody saying, there's no kind of consequences to not doing the work. Then you just, uh, for me at least, when back then there was just. I just no motivation or maybe not no discipline to actually do the work uh, that was needed to, to get to the certain goal. Um, so that's the kind of place that I was in for from April till around August. Um, and it was, this was a lockdown as well. So literally I had every reason to work, but I just did nothing. I literally did absolutely nothing. Um, and I don't, I don't like saying that, but I just want to be true. Um, no, for sure. For yeah, sure. And I, I think, I think that's valuable to a lot of people, man. Yeah, 100%. Uh, like that's why, why I wanted to, to get into that topic because look, I've, I've had mentees who, like straight out of the bat, they sign a client after a week, two weeks, right? Yeah. But then one of the things I liked about your story is that like you've fucked around for like months, yeah. right? And right. then then you then you like came back. Like it was like a, the greatest comeback, right? <laughs> one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen. Like you come back, right? Um, and something clicks. Like what, what do you think clicks? What, what do you think clicked uh, inside your brain? Um, what clicks was I started to kind of, I started to actually realize that if I want in a life, that I was, ha- if I want the life that I was dreaming to have, I was getting close to the point where I need to start, need to start doing something about it because it was getting to the point where school's a bit to finish. So if I don't have a proof of concept of what I'm doing, then I would have to go down the route of that my parents would want me to go down, which is university job. Um, so I started to realize that if I if I wanted this dream to become a reality and I wanted to prove to my parents, especially to to make them understand that this is something that they can take seriously, um, and that I'm taking seriously, I had to actually you know have some proof or like some evidence that that what i'm doing is 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 worth the time and worth me saying that i'm not going to university for it or not not focusing on school for it um so that's it clicked sort of then after a long time of not doing anything i I just actually sat and realized for the first past like six months or back then the past like four six to six months i literally did nothing like that was actually useful towards the agency i was just doing pointless work like website working on the website god knows what else man it's pointless stuff um and yeah, so I, I just, at some point, um, I started to get like a little bit of accountability uh, and I started to realize that if I want the life that I'm dreaming of, I actually have to do something, uh, especially because my parents were, um, I kept it, I kept it very to myself. Like I didn't 
put out there really back then that I wanted to hit 10k, I wanted to do this and this and that. But then at that point, I then put it out there that I wanted to hit 10k. I tried to build some accountability and some kind of way of other people. You know, it's not just myself in it. Like I started to, I put in my wall, like I want to hit 10k by my birthday. I put, I told people that, yeah, I run an agency and I'm going to hit 10k soon. I started to do that actively and it started to kind of mm-hmm. build in my mind. My, like my self image was changed from a person who's trying to start an agency to a person who is running, is running an agency. Um, and that was definitely a big thing too. Uh, kind of, I guess you say manifestation uh, almost. Um, that yeah, was yeah. a big shift that, that, that kind of helped me. And I realized that looking back now that starting to do that where you, you know, having something on your wall is obviously a big thing that you look at every single day, God knows how many times a day. Then you start telling people that you're doing it. So it kind of gives you a sense of accountability where you kind of have to do what you're saying you're doing. Um, otherwise, people will, will kind of just be like, oh, well, that was kind of rubbish that you just talked about. Um, so that's why I started to actually put in the work. And then that, and then I'm lucky at that. I, I was at a point where I knew literally everything I could have wanted to know to sign a few clients and get to 10K. Um, I literally had every strategy I could have wanted to know. It was just about me doing this, like actually implementing the strategy and, and executing. Uh, and then lucky, I'm luckily that um, I worked smarter rather than harder. Um, and then I, yeah, I was lucky enough to, to actually get to that point really quickly um, after I started to do the, after I started to do the work. How, how quick uh, was it after quick. you like yes, went quick. hard? I said um, August is when I started doing the work, and July is when I kind of realized. August is when I started. Um, by September time, uh, when was that? I remember sending the post. I remember sending it to you. When I when I first had 10k in my bank account from that month, yeah, uh, I was like, what was that September or something? I think it was around September. Yeah, I think um, it was like late late September or something like that. Yeah, like late that. September. So yeah, late September is Pretty when nice I hit, when I first hit the 10k, and then yeah. In in terms of you know I, I, one of the things that that you mentioned that I really really liked um, is the self identity, and it's, it's it's one of the things that I talk about. Like one of the hardest things things about starting a a, a business and, and an agency is like feeling like you're an agency owner and acting like you're an agency owner because. Right. The toughest part is like, until you sign that false client, you don't feel like you're an agency owner. So you don't act like an agency owner. It's like the, the easiest way to quit smoking or quit any bad habit is like not, not identifying as a smoker, right? Like that makes it so extremely, um, so, you know, so extremely easy, uh, yeah. to, to then quit that bad habit or, uh, restart that, that, that habit. Yeah. Um, do, do you feel like when you sign that false client, it changed the whole game? Yeah. Uh, like the, the identity, uh, everything just became like 10 times easier or how, how do you, can you like go back to that moment of, of signing your first client? How do you feel? Did it change anything in you? Um, did it change how you acted going forward? Yeah. So yeah, that was, that was a huge point in terms of like the way I looked at myself and the way I kind of presented myself. Cause I could, I'm now, I now have a client, you know, it's, it's pretty big back then. Uh, it's still pretty as big. It's still pretty big. Um, so when I, that was obviously the first bit of money I made. The first bit of money that came into my stripe um, was that first client. Um, I never, be, I, ne- I never could say that. You know, I knew all the stuff about service delivery or like how, what to do when you send a client onboarding, working with your media buyer. I was never, be, I never was able to put that into. I never I was never able to implement that that knowledge. Um, but now that I could, I had a client. I had an econ client that I could actually run ads for and use my media buyer and start building a relationship and start talking to people. Uh, so that's how I started start to communicate with the client uh, as well as my media buyer and coordinate things. It was really, really big. Even though it was one client, um, it was just, it was really, really huge um, in terms of my mindset. I just felt like a business owner. I was felt like I was becoming a business owner. Um, like that dream that I had of the, like when I put my wall, hit 10K by my des- birthday in December, I was like, I was starting to become a reality almost. Um, and instead of it becoming a dream, it was more like, yeah, that is, it's like a, I have a roadmap of how to hit it now because I've already done it once, so I can just do it again uh, until I hit that 10K mark. Um, and yeah, I'm lucky that it happened faster than I, than I planned out to be. Um, but yeah, that, that, selling that first client was huge. Even if it's not a good client, uh, honestly, I'd say that I wouldn't be disheartened if it wasn't a good client because honestly, not having a good client is a better learning experience than having a good one. Because if you start out with a good client, um, even though nothing wrong with that, it's really good. But if you start out with a good client, you never know what the bad side of things are. So I started out with a really bad client. Um, like it was just, I mean, yeah, it was just a really bad client. The budget was terrible. Um, you know, just in, in general, it just wasn't a good, wasn't a good client. Um, and then, so I knew everything in terms of the bad side uh, of, of, of a client and the client relations and stuff like that and how the yeah, the, the opposite side of, of good would be. Um, so that kind of made me appreciate good clients even more, maybe understand what kind of person to look out for, uh, especially when when like um, on a meeting with a, with a client. 
you can tell by the way they talk or the way they communicate with you if they're going to be a good client in the long run. Um, mm-hmm. So I knew the bad side to begin with, which is I think is quite good. I, I think was, I'm lucky to have that um, so, so I can understand properly and appreciate what a good client is and know that I can kind of spot out the bad clients. Um, I was able to spot out the bad people that would, that would be clients um, when I'm on meetings with them. And that saved me a lot of time and, and hassle as well and kind of stress. 100%, man. I think, I think that's a really good point. Um, I feel like a lot of people starting out, they, they look for the ideal uh, conditions, right? Yet, if you look at the most successful agency owners, my most successful students, the common trait is they've, 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 done, you know, they've experienced the, the, the worst and they've experienced the greatest, right? They've launched some of the worst uh, advertising campaigns in history, but they've also launched some of the, the greatest campaigns, right? And been extremely successful with those. They've had some of the worst clients and they've had some of the greatest clients, right? When you don't know what the range can look like, you, don't, you, you cannot judge, right? Your, your perception is, is severely limited. Um, so 100%. Now, in terms of going forward, right after that, uh, after the first client, how did you uh, manage? Uh, did it ever get to a point where it was like overwhelming, or um, did you ever get to a point where it was like you reach maximum capacity? How did you manage this new life where you just like woke up and you worked on on your agency and and uh, and you know full time, like just felt like a, a, a true agency owner? Yeah. So moving on from that, I was this time school was back on, I believe. Yeah, school was back on, so I was at school. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started to kind of, I felt a lot more motivated to do work because I had work to do. Like it was like before, the, obviously the work before was on me. Like I, I just, it was on me to do it. And if it didn't happen, if I didn't do the work, nothing would happen. But now that I had this client and my business was becoming a thing, um, like I have a first customer that I have to take care of. I started to have like a bit more motivation to get, to get to my computer and start doing work. Um, and that, that kind of had like a snowball effect. Um, so like when it comes to, you had to go to the computer to, to you know reply to a message you then would just do the we just do whatever else you need like outreach and then that would lead to another client coming on like three weeks yeah. two three weeks later and it just happened again happened again happened again until i hit 10k uh it's like the, the amount of my bank account was 10k from that month um and yeah it was it was it was really it was like surreal like i didn't understand it it was just like it was all just like money like like numbers on the screen really like i didn't understand the value yeah. of money because never i'd never used it like um with all the money that I got back then, like I didn't have, I didn't have any use for it. Um, so it was kind of like just numbers in the screen, like a game. So I was, I was like, mm. so I, I didn't understand the, the impact of it um, until I actually you yeah. know, started to use it. Yeah. And going back, you know, going to the, because um, obviously you're still, you know, you're still in, in high school. Uh, and yeah. for those watching who are, who are still in, either in, uh, stuck in college, maybe a job even or high school, uh, like how do you balance, uh, first of all, how do you balance the, the, the workload? Yeah, so the way I balance it is I think that I have two days in one day. So my first day is something that I can't negotiate with, which is school. Um, so I have to so have routines around that day. So obviously wake up uh, in terms of school. And college might be different if you're in university, but um, with school especially, it's a lot more strict timetable. So obviously you wake up, um, you go to school at 9 a.m., come back at 3, 4, uh, yeah, 3 to 4. So that's your first day. That's something that you can't negotiate, really just have to get it done. But then the the rest of the other part of the day, four to nine PM, that's your day. That's like the second day within one day that you have control over. Um so that's why I like it, I like to think that I live two days in one day, at least when I was in school. Uh, like we obviously now is in lockdown, so there's no school. Um that's that's like uh where I'd where I'd then start to implement the routines that you you hear online. I'd have morning routines, work I'd meditate, I'd have cold showers, work out, um, start doing work blocks. Um, so that's how I do it. Um, you kind of have to, we have to set limitations in terms of how much time school really needs. You can't just say, you, you can't just kind of try balance both. Like, yeah, I'll do some school work, school work right now. Then I'll do some agency work. Like, you just you really have to set like, 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 like harsh boundaries for me at least. Otherwise, you'd just be sitting there doing the kind of work that isn't really moving the boat forward. So it's happened a lot. This is a huge problem that I had. Um, like, I have work blocks. I'd, 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 have, I'd have set out times that I'd need to work, especially when I come back from school, but then I'd, I'd not really know what I'm doing in those work blocks. Like I'd just be sitting there like, oh, what do I actually do now? Um, like I, I'd procrastinate too much to be able to be bothered to do a, to do a loom, for example, um, or to do some outreach, for example. Um, I'd just kind of sit there and like, f- like just do rubbish. Like I'd just procrastinate, reply to emails, reply to Slack messages. Um, so that's why you have to be extremely, not extremely strict. I just say you have to plan out um, what you're doing 
Uh, so don't overwork yourself. Just work smart. That's why I said before I worked smarter, not harder. Like I didn't, I didn't work extreme hours. I didn't stay up all night working. Like I went to sleep all the time at like ten, like ten, eleven, twelve. Um, like I stopped working at eight or nine. Um, so just work smarter and keep consistent rather than working harder. So just ha- set out exactly what needs to be done, like non-negotiable tasks. For example, loom out reach if you're doing loom out reach or whatever else messages. Um, like outreach is of course the biggest thing when it comes to when you're starting an agency is what's going to bring the clients in. So sit, kind of plan out before, have exact um, time, the time that you're going to do it, how much you're going to do. Uh, and you know, it's, so you're not going into a work block, you're not coming back from school or university and thinking, okay, what can I do now? for the agency you kind of you already have it planned out so you just say i'm going to smash this i'm going to get it done and then after that i can take a break and just do whatever i want so you just you feel like life doesn't feel too um you know restricted because uh-huh. did, did the social scene take a hit as well um how did you manage the the social component of building a success you know building a successful online business but also did you have time for friends did you cut cut them all out uh, how did that look for you so that's one of the biggest, I didn't mention this actually. So that's one of the biggest things that's changed for me as well. Um, in terms of like social, my, my social life. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'll be truthful. I was a very awkward kind of guy. I wasn't a kind of a guy who was like very outward, outgoing, I guess. Um, I didn't have many friends. Uh, when I was like, you know, in that period where, you know, I wasn't the business ones doing well. I didn't have that mindset of shift. I, one huge shift that I had in the, my, the way, like the way I live my life and the kind of person I am was my social life. Like um, the way I present myself, the way I talk to people, how confident I am, it changed big time. Like a huge, like, huge massive difference, different person completely compared to what I am now to to, to what I was before. Um, so honestly, I didn't have a social life much to begin with. <laughs> so um, especially because I was young too and in school, I didn't have much of a social life. I was a bit of an awkward guy. Um, so it did, I mean, it did take a hit in terms of, I couldn't really talk with anybody about it. That It was quite a lonely time. Um, you know, that, that, that's, you still kind of feel that way. Now it's a lot better, obviously, because I have a huge network of friends that I'm very grateful for. Um, but back then, it was it was very, very lonely. Um, like, I couldn't yeah. talk about my business or what I was doing with anybody else because nobody would understand. Like, especially even when I was starting out, looking into agencies, uh, into the agency space, I'd show my friends and like, oh, this business sounds kind of cool. And then they just, you know, they just be the kind of people that will just be like, yeah, it's just rubbish. Like, why? It's just a scam. And why would somebody pay? Do you know how much money you were making and all this stuff, right? No, no, I kept it very private. Um, and I still do, to be honest. I don't actively put it out there that I make this much. Even though I don't, I'm not bothered about telling. Like, it's you know. Sorry, are you currently making right now? What's so I, I, I'm lucky that you got, you got me a good time where I actually hit one k a day in dollars. Um, okay. the, the other, like last two weeks ago. Um, so yeah. Talking I mean, about thirty k, thirty k a month at at, at eighteen. Yeah, so in dollars, yeah. Okay. Um, luckily to say that. Um, yeah. I didn't realize that until... Because until, uh, I didn't realize the conversion value between pounds and, and dollars until like two weeks ago. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, I do make one kid in dollars, so I'm happy about that. But yeah, in terms of... I didn't tell anybody anything about my business back then. Um, it was really just a community of of the... Like the community you made, for example, um, for, for agency owners. That was really much the only place I, I talked about my agency to. Um, didn't even tell my parents, to be honest. Um yeah, it was. Just, I was just. I felt like I was very lonely. Didn't really tell much about. Didn't tell anybody about what I was doing. Um, and 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 now you. So so you've leveled up your your network, right? And and that's that's you know obviously you mentioned that that's a something that one of the the great things about this journey that you've gone on, right? And one of the things that you're very grateful for. Um, what do you think changed? Like and and why? What was the the cost, right? It was the cost and effect. Like, why do you think you changed into this person that could now network with? You know, mm-hmm. cool people. You know, I, I don't want to call them cool people, but like you know, people that you resonate mm-hmm. with, people that have a similar mindset, like-minded people, uh, people that you can travel with. You, you told you told me you were going to Bali, LA. Um, like, what what changed in you, and what allowed you to? What do you think allowed you to level up? Like a, a few tips uh, on networking on on that front. Yeah. So I mean, it's just confidence was a huge thing. Like I was very, and people know this. Like I, for example, like one good example is. Um, there were some girls that, that went to my school uh, and they were, so they saw me from the person that I was, um, like the person I was very shy, didn't, know, didn't talk to anybody, was just kind of like an awkward person in general. Um, and then they hadn't seen me for months because um, I didn't really go to school that much, but kind of like I left school to one side. Um, they And they were in Dubai. So I just, I just uh, you know, like by coincidence, I, I had met up with them. And for that, for them to, see, for, they, they told me this like a few weeks after, for them to see me go from, um, the person I was, I was kind of, I guess the reason for that was, is because I was put in a situation where I kind of had to change. 
Uh, I was when I went. I, I'm so grateful that I went to Dubai and I stayed there for the time that I did. So for context, um, when I started to do well, um, in around November, uh, November I then made the decision to go out to Dubai, um, to meet one friend. And that one friend, um, I was only meant to stay for a week. Obviously, I did. I had to tell my parents at that time that I was doing well to be able to justify that I wasn't going to say that I'm going to go to Dubai when I'm 17. Um, uh, so they said okay you can go for one week after a lot of arguing and a lot of like uh, stress uh, they said okay one week um, to meet one fr- to meet I had I had one I had one friend at that time uh, that was there um, an agency owner as well um, and f- I was so grateful that I went to Dubai honestly if I didn't go to Dubai um, at that time I wouldn't be the same person I am because because it put me in a situation where I had to change the way I was um, in a lot of ways uh confidence was a huge huge thing in the social like social environment um so putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation uh is an extremely important thing to do especially when you're young um to to kind of take to come out of your shell almost i guess is a good way of putting it um so you have to kind of be in that situation so i mean i'll kind of be like i'll tell you some stuff that happened so obviously those um so i'd never been able so i told you like i told you i was an awkward guy so girls was one thing I, i never I never talked to a girl. Like I literally had no conversation with any girl at that time. Mm. I went to Dubai, um, I, and it happened again. I was in social circles, but I just I was so I was too shy to talk to to, to a girl. Um, and then the it started to happen where, you know, I started to talk to talk to a girl. A girl started talking to me. Uh, to begin with, I was extremely shy. Like I'd, I'd never I didn't know what to say in a conversation. Like I what, what I was just like weirded out. Um, but then I like a few days after going out every night maybe like a week or two I started to be like like something just shifted in my mind where I just started to be a bit more confident and then I'll, 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 be, I'll tell you something funny so uh, there was there was one girl um, that was within Dubai um, and this was the first girl that ever flirted with me I'm going to be sure I've run her vote there was the first girl that ever flirted with me let's, let's, let's hear some juicy stories some juicy Dubai stories <laughs> Dubai stories I, I can get into extreme details but I'll, I'll keep it kind of PG um so, uh, so yeah, that was the first girl. Uh, there was a first girl that ever flirted with me, um, and she was older than me. So I was like, I, I was so shocked when that happened. I was like, I was like, what the fuck? I was like, what's going on? Um, and that, I guess, that sort of gave me the ego boost, ego boost that I need to to be able to be more confident in the social environment. Um, so that was a huge. That was that's something else that I'm grateful for that I had that experience like that I'd never had yeah. before, um, and that that shifted my mindset in terms of uh, you know talking to people. Uh, and talking to girls especially um that was something that changed big time um in terms of yeah and then from there i I, from that point onwards i was just a a different person completely in terms of when i talk to people i'd be a lot more open uh i'd be a lot more confident in the way i speak um the way i dress even that changed completely as well i'd be a lot more confident in the way i dress Uh, like you know i'd never wear something like this before like a shirt a shirt a nice night a nice like clothes um yeah, I just felt a lot more better about myself than I did before. Yeah. I wouldn't just sit there in the corner and not speak. I'd actually, you know, actively, you know, speak. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that, that, that and I'm grateful that yeah. that happened. That experience, I went through those experiences, and um, that led to me changing the way I was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that you, you, uh, you delved into this, um, and and you talked about this because that's one of the things that that I feel, you know, being an agency owner, um, gives you right. It's, 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 yeah. it gives you this, it gives you this ability. Uh, to to feel comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Like jumping, you know, the, the foss you were building up to a point by just jumping on calls with prospects, right? Like just getting those those first few calls. Like it is a bit nerve wracking when you're when you're speaking to those those first prospects, right? You have to jump on calls. You're uncomfortable. You don't know, you know, you don't know really how to express yourself too well, right? But then you start building your you know this confidence, and then talking to strangers becomes easy, right? Because you've talked to so many prospects, right? That you don't know. Um, in a much, you know, in, in higher stakes scenarios, right? Talking to girls becomes easier, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, doing all this stuff that would make you uncomfortable, you see, you see uh, discomfort as the way forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's massive. Like that, that's why I think like building a business is not so much about the money you make, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's more about the person you become in that process. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's also about a big thing is like unlocking your potential. Like you, you, if you have a self image, like, if you if you see yourself as one thing you'll never like mm. you yourself you have a huge potential but you never you don't unlock that potential until you see yourself worthy of unlocking that potential does that make sense mm. um so you have i guess a, a, an experience is like one big thing that will be able to unlock that unlock that kind of self-image to be able to say that i am actually worthy like I, before let's let's take it back to the girl example 
Before, I'd never be able to think that a girl would want to flirt with me. I'd, like, I, I, that never came to mind whatsoever. Like, I could never, ever cross my mind. But then when that happened, that I was actually, and I was like, a, let's say this, it was a girl that I wouldn't ever expect would ever flirt with me in terms of, you know, the, the way that she was. Um, I, yeah, so that having an experience um, can kind of, is a is a big is a big help a big helper and the way you get get those experiences is by going into those situations and putting yourself in those kind of places where mm. you know that you're where you're where you are uncomfortable where you have where you are where you could experiences experience those yeah. kind of situations that you never would have been able to before um mm. that's a big big thing yeah yeah and, and then and then you start getting this little small wins right mm -hmm. and those start to build up confidence like right. that that's what that's why i feel people um forget right is the fact that like Look, the person you are today is not the same person that you're going to be when you hit that 10k month mark or when you get to a point where you know with you know like you with your agency right now uh, hitting 30k per month right it's a completely different type of person and that you've been able to change transform into that person because you've chased that discomfort and you've gotten some little wins under your belt that allowed you to you know propel you forward to getting those bigger bigger wins right it's kind of like you're you, you start winning and you cannot stop winning yeah 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 definitely yeah, it's really, yeah, yeah, 100%. So experiences and just getting wins and different little private sort of victories and sort of private experiences that you don't really tell anybody else about, but mm. you, you know in yourself that, you yeah, I've never experienced that before. I've never got this before. It starts like compiling up and just turns you into, like kind of makes that, it kind of kind of kickstarts that kind of mindset shift or, or like um, shift within yourself to, to be able to, come to, to become the person that you want to be. Is there is there anything that the money uh, is there anything else that that money has helped you with, uh, or that money has you know just the way that money has had an impact on on your life? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. So money. So I don't think like I never actually celebrated the fact that I had one k a month. I'm sorry, one k a day. Um, because it because and the reason for it is because when you're around, especially when you're in a situation. So this is another reason why, reason why I'm grateful that I went to Dubai. You are around such like um, immense wealth. Like the people you're yes. chilling with are like billionaires, and they have like money that they like couldn't care about, like, couldn't care less about. Um, so when you are around those people, and especially when you're doing their similar age to you, like maybe like five years older, six years older, um, money and it starts to become less of an object almost. It starts, it starts to become less. You're less scared about you know a certain figure, um, because because you're around such immense wealth that. So like a number like 30k 30k a month is so like small like it's just it, and doesn't, it sounds quite bad but it's so small compared to what everybody else is around you is doing so that social circle that social circle that network <coughs> is so important to be able to for you to kind of realize that you're you can be part of that um to, to be able to level yourself up mm -hmm. so those like small numbers like 10k 10k 30k 50k are numbers that um in the long run are just part of the process like it's not that me you know it's obviously good to celebrate them but at the end of the day it's just part of the process and you're meant for a lot more than that you're meant to be in this kind of generation in this kind of bracket of generational wealth where you have money to do whatever you want with um where you don't worry about this kind of small wins here and there it's more just i mean not wins sorry small numbers here and there um so yeah that was a huge huge thing and um, then and that the biggest thing that comes with that is i had it became so like it became feasible in my mind. Like the the I had no fear of becoming a millionaire, but before the age of twenty, like I, I had no I had a big fear of how I was going to do that, um, and if it actually was possible. But being around the friends that I have now, uh, especially in a place like Dubai, because there's so much wealth around you, um, I, I had friends that were like nineteen, twenty, making millions and millions, and and they started to tell me how they made it, um, and I could see that my path was very similar to theirs, and I started to understand that the numbers that I was hoping to hit. Are, are nothing compared to what what potential that we actually have, um, and that I actually have a roadmap now that is those numbers are extremely feasible. Um, like I have a roadmap set set out in my mind, um, of exactly how I'm gonna hit there. Like before, a million was like a foreign concept. Like even ten k was a foreign concept. Like how how do you hit ten k a month? But then I then I realized that I had a roadmap after you know yeah after our mentorship, I had a roadmap of what I needed to do to get there. Then it came to like a number like a million. Um, that's uh, about maybe like five months ago that was uh, like unattainable that was completely foreign like a million is like a huge number but now I have this in my mind exactly how I can hit that very easily no, not easily sorry very simple and a very simple kind of roadmap um, and it just kind of keeps going like that so um, I'm now 
a lot less worried about numbers more uh, i'm more just worried about life experiences and, and kind of my social circles and all this kind of stuff so it was a huge huge big um big change that made yeah yeah man and, and uh purely just enjoying the game uh and enjoying the, the fruits of yeah it's yeah. just the game man at the end of the day right dude i think that's a a really good spot to uh to wrap up this uh this interview man i think you uh you uh, came through, you dropped some value bombs. Uh, I think we've, uh, we've touched on a lot of uh, really cool insight. Um, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I want to acknowledge you, man, for, uh, for going from this, this kid that I, I first met, right? Um, without much, I mean, you obviously had the ambition, right? But without much work ethic um, mm-hmm. to then going on this, not only having the right guidance, right? After the mentorship and, and having the right plan of attack, but then realizing well, I, I got to put in the work, right? Um, and, and transforming yourself into the, the person you're, you're today, man. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely proud of, uh, Thank proud you, of you. You know, you don't need, you don't need me to tell you that, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I know you're, you're going to be, um, you're going to be doing great things. Uh, you already are. Uh, and I think, uh, that there's a lot of, uh, great, great things that are in store for you. So I uh, appreciate you for coming on. Uh, obviously we'll stay in touch, man. We, we always do, uh, through Instagram and, uh, the 10 yeah. club and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Any, any final words, um, um final, final comments. Yeah, I mean, I guess for anybody that's kind of my age watching this, or any age, to be honest, um, it's just about you need to stop worrying about um, kind of the small things that don't have much difference in, like, don't have much effect in the long term kind of thing. So, what I mean by that is, in agency, for if you run an agency, for example, if you're starting to do it, having um, t- attaching emotion towards small th- things that I always see that's happening, like people are worried about. Like open rates of their email is like, they, they they get annoyed about open rates. They get disheartened by you know little small things like the, like a client not coming through. Like it's just at the end of the day, like this. It, it, there's two different types of entrepreneurs: lifestyle entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs. As I'd, I'd imagine most people will be want to be serial entrepreneurs after they actually be, see some success. So what that means is there's um you know within business there's every, every all these small tasks don't actually mean much in, in the long run all these small tasks that you attach emotion to now they seem big now but in the long in long term kind of things a lot the, the the long game um they really don't matter and it's just in terms of you just keep consistent in the tasks that you, in, the, in the things that you know work there's proven things to work you've been told countless, countless times especially if you've been to a mentorship or a course those things are proven to work so just if you just trust the process, be consistent, and stop stop attaching your emotion to those things, uh, in the long term, you will see the success that you want to see. Awesome, brother. So, um, I think I think that's a a, a great uh, a great way to uh, to wrap it up. But we'll uh, we'll chat soon. Uh, appreciate you all for uh, for watching this interview with Kasim. Uh, where can people uh, find you? Uh, I'm actually so I have the Instagram. Instagram, you can just follow me on that if you want to leave like um, it's like underscore dot cast. Yeah, you, just, you can put that in the link in the description. And then I'm also starting a YouTube channel. Um, so a few videos are already edited, just going out uh, right, in a week right. or two. So yeah, um, good. That's going to be exciting there. So YouTube starting up. Um, yeah. So yeah, should be good there, guys. If you want to watch any videos, go through. Yeah. Uh, you can learn and and if you if you follow him on Instagram, just a, a warning. Uh, his stories may create uh, envy and jealousy because <laughs> I, I know you're going to be uh, living it up in, in Dubai uh, very, very soon. So, uh, no, in, in all seriousness, um, check him out, guys. Um, but that's a wrap. All right, brother. We'll, uh, we'll speak soon. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, guys. So there you have it. Really hope you enjoyed that interview. I think we covered a lot of topics. A really wide range of conversation and hopefully you took value out of it and you're also excited for the upcoming student interviews. Now, if you want results like Kasim and you're willing to put in the work, I recommend you check out the link in the description. That is a link to my scheduler to apply for the mentorship. The first thing that we do is you jump on a call with myself and my team. We have a little chat, we get to know each other and see if you'd be a good fit. And if you are, we'll discuss further. And with that being said, that is that for this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.